All right. Welcome to FIBAN Founders Club. Exciting to have you joining us online for, for today's event. And today we're going to share you an uh, extremely uh, exciting story uh, of an exit that took less than two weeks from the first contact to actually sign the paper. So this uh, crazy cool story. And of course, we want to cover this one. All right. Uh, so it's the story of whiteboard.fi. Basim, if you may change the slide for me. And yes, so this is the program. So first, we're going to go through the story. But in the beginning, uh, we like to introduce you uh, who are there online joining us as guests uh, for this uh, to kind of part participate. And we're going to ask you one question in the beginning. And uh, uh, so beware uh, and be ready for that. And uh, then uh, then we go through the story, and then in the end, there's the Q&A session where you guys get to ask questions from Sebastian. All right. So before we go into the program, just a quick word on the FIBAN Founders Club. So if you have a FIBAN member as an investor in your company, then you're liable to have all these benefits uh, that we are presenting here. So you can share your successful funding runs through FIBAN. That's, of course, a great way to get uh, visibility for your company. Then we have exclusive benefits. At the moment, we have uh, AWS for 10,000 euros worth of cloud credits. We have Stripes, where you get 20,000 processing volume for free of charge from Stripe. And then, of course, you can get up to 90% off from HubSpot software. So really great benefits and definitely utilize these. Uh, if you go to fiba.org slash founders, you can find all the upcoming events that are targeted for founders. There is our event and other events in the ecosystem. So if you had a FIBA member, if you are a founder and you got a FIBA member as an investor in your company, join the club. But now let's go on to the actual show today and the star of the day. Uh, welcome Sebastian Laxell. So we are great to have you here. You're the creator of whiteboard.fi and CEO on the digital teaching tools, Finland. And so we're going to cover the story of, of the exit of whiteboard.fi. But before we go into deeper into that story, uh, Sebastian, would you like to introduce yourself with your own words and, uh, and tell us how you became an entrepreneur? Thank you, Antti, and, and hello, everybody. It's nice to be here, and, and thank you for, for having me. I am Sebastian Laxell. I am the, the creator of Whiteboard.fi and the CEO of the company that runs it, uh, Digital Teaching Tools, Finland, OU. And uh, I, have, um, I have developed the web applications for a very long time, probably over 15 years, and uh, it has always been a hobby of mine, and... Um, I have always done it on the side of my full-time jobs. Uh, I have a background as a teacher in mathematics and computer science. And I have also worked as an uh, IT manager for a municipality here in, in Southern Finland. Uh, as a web developer, I have always found uh, different needs for services. And, and uh, I have always found it very exciting to come up with an idea for a service and then to develop it and release it to the world. It, it's kind of like a superpower. And with this online web de development, it's so exciting to, to reach out to the whole world immediately. So, so this is what's, what's uh, driving me. And of course, the, the whole creative process. And, and um, most of these ideas uh, I have, uh, have came from problems or needs that I have found during my studies or, or, or in my work. Um, and that's also the case with, with whiteboard. Dot five. And, and like um, every great EDU tech product, it starts off in the classroom back in 2016. And uh, <clears throat> back then I was um, experimenting with different ways to engage the student and with this concept of, of uh, formative assessment. And, and um, a formative assessment is uh, compared to this traditional uh, summative assessment, uh, where you typically have an exam uh, in the end of the semester. Uh, so, so formative assessment is the process of continuously evaluating the student's knowledge in the classroom so that you have the time to learn about different misunderstandings or gaps of knowledge and, and can address them uh, in the classroom before it's too late. So you don't wait to the end of the semester, you, you address them uh, immediately. So, so you, you probably know this, this concept also in the, in the classroom where 
and the teacher asks a question and some of the students raise their hands to, to, to answer. Uh, I was looking for a way uh, to let all the students answer my question, not just the one raising their hands. Uh, and I was also looking for a way to engage all the students. So, so I came up with this idea of creating individual digital whiteboards uh, that the student could use to answer my question. So, so what I would do is I would ask a question and let the students answer on their own digital whiteboard where they can type or draw or make annotations on images and, and so forth. And I, as the teacher, could see all the students answer in real time and could there directly in the classroom immediately correct any misunderstandings the students had. And, and this without pointing out any particular student. So, so this way, all the students were engaged when I asked a question and I could differ differentiate there immediately between the students actually not knowing their answer uh, and those just sitting there daydreaming when they weren't raising their hands. So, so this is the, the service of, of, uh, uh, of whiteboard.fi in a nutshell. So it's a tool for, for formative assessment. So, so back, back then in 2016, I created a, a prototype uh, of, of this service and I, I tried it out with my students and it was, I would say, an immediate success. I felt somehow like, like uh, this, this whole formative assessment process was, ta was taken to, to the next level. So, so um, I sh showed the service to a couple of teacher colleagues and then I, I released it, it uh, to the public. Uh, before this, I had had uh, developed different web services as well. So this is was like one one of one one of many. Uh, but then we need to fast forward uh, a couple of years uh, to the I would say around the autumn of two thousand and nineteen. Uh, by this, the the service had uh, around thirty thousand unique users per month. But but suddenly the server started to to go hot, uh, and I noticed that that the, the the, the knowledge of the service was spreading in the United States. And I suddenly found lots of blogs and YouTube videos and the different tweets about, about the service. And uh, then a few months later, uh, the service had about 300,000 unique monthly users. And uh, at this time, uh, we're talking early 2020, you all know what happened. It was the, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Um, but actually before this, I had uh, for a very long time uh, dreaming of taking the leap, uh, leap of faith and, and uh, going full-time entrepreneur. And I have decided that this is something that I, I was, was, uh, was uh, about to do. And, and this was a decision I made actually before, before Whiteboard.fi started, started growing. Uh, but, I, but I quit my, my full-time job and started working full-time now on the product as I noticed it had, had the momentum. So I focused totally on that, uh, on that product. And, and um, now we're talking um, Q, Q2 uh, um, 2020. And at this time uh, already the server costs started to be, be, be quite high as, as the, this was a, a free service and I was paying everything out of my own pocket. So, so I started thinking, how, how can I now keep this, this service running? How can, I, how can I cover all the expenses that it, that it, uh, it takes to, to run, run a, a large uh, internet service like, like this? So, so this is where, when I teamed up with, uh, with uh, Jaakko, the other co-founder, that I knew from, from before and, and we created a company around the, the product together and, and started figuring out how to monetize the, the service and how to keep the growth going and how to scale the, the service uh, even further to the, to the next level. So uh, around this time, at the same time, I, I participated in this uh, ID competition called the uh, uh, Game of IDs. It, is, it, it was arranged by, by Novago here in, in Rasepori. It, it's kind of like Shark Tank or Dragon's Den or Leon and Luola, you know, these, these types of, of events where, where I also pitched the, the product and the, and the ID. Uh, and at, at this point, uh, now we're talking August 2020, uh, the service had around 1 million unique visitors each month and, and it was growing, growing steadily. And the purpose with this, this pitch and this, this participation in this ID competition was to, 
to get some early investors on board so that we could continue running the service until the monetization model was ready. Uh, so, so, but, but also, of course, to get some more, more connections uh, in the educational network and, and, uh, co and experience with educational organization sales and, uh, and such. So, so um, uh, the event resulted in two investors joining, Reima and, and Janne, and, and uh, together then with them, we, we discussed different um, monetization models and, and different go-to-market strategies and, and so forth. And uh, worked really, really hard on this monetization model on the service. And, and then we released the, the premium flats in uh, late November. And, and they, they really were an immediate success. At, at this time, the service had about uh, 6 million unique users uh, each month, mostly in the United States and in, in um, Saudi Arabia. So, so, right. so <clears throat> I'm going yeah. to close it there so that we don't go too deep into the story at this point yet. So, so great, uh, great to hear about how it actually got started. So, so you have had a, a great journey and beforehand before actually uh, starting to pursue the whiteboard.fi, but it's uh, uh, great to see how this uh, actually came alive when you've been a teacher in the classroom, finding that there's a problem, and and, and actually that that that's how it ignited. All right, but hey, uh, so we're gonna we're gonna go deeper into that story of that, but uh, now let's have the word cloud. Uh, so we would like like to ask everybody online, if you please would go to menti.f uh, menti Sorry. And, 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 and you should be seeing the code. Uh, uh, so the code is uh, 5836-4548. So go menti.com and use the code 5836-4548. Yeah, I, I <laughs> struggling with the numbers, with the mathematics <laughs> so in the interview. So. All right, but yeah, so that's all good. And, and so the question is, how, what does it take to be exit ready? So we're making you guys online think about this as well. So what does it take to be exit ready? And there will be a word cloud uh, appearing in the there on the screen. And in the meanwhile, uh, while we wait for that to uh, actually come, so uh, Sebastian, I would like to ask you an additional question. So, um, uh, so what do you have like a certain kind of uh, pattern uh, of these uh, ideas that you said that you, You've been coming up with different types of ideas. I've been seeing your website. You have there different types of ideas. Is there a pattern that you follow, or is it just that when you see a problem, you start to look for some kind of solution for there? What what kind of things? Oh well, uh, I think that that many entrepreneurs and developers can agree with me that that when you when you work with development and and when you are an entrepreneur, you 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 really you get ideas all the time. You, you cannot help it. And, and, and that's what I have done always. I, I get these ideas and I, I note them down. So I have a huge, huge bank of different, different ideas. Uh, I, I, maybe I, I would say that I often call it ITHD, like a sort of ADHD, but, but it's like information technology, <laughs> hyperactive <laughs> disorders that you just, you're, you're, you're bombarded with these ideas all the time. But, but often it, it, it's, um, I would say when, when you get an idea and you start thinking about it, you, 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 you of course, try to solve, uh, solve a problem or to make an existing process even more smooth. And, and with this combination of technology, it's, um, at least for me, it's, it's uh, so, somehow connected to, to, to web development. But, but I also, I, I feel that, that I need to have to do to, to somehow, somehow break myself also. So, so I don't, try to, to start um, uh, developing a, in an IG in a field that I don't know so much about. So, so I have always kept my, my, my development within those fields that I know. So that's, that's like technology and education mostly. Uh, but but um, I, I wouldn't say it, it, there's a, a, a simple pattern. It just, it, it, it's just, it, it pops up all the time, these different ideas. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure uh, many online can relate to that, uh, so, so definitely. Okay, we have a few words here now. So, so there's, uh, I think the first word that came there was timing. And I think that's uh, perfect in your case as well, uh, uh, in, in, a, in a way that, that you actually, the, the momentum game from the timing and, and, and also kind of uh, uh, that was 
probably one of the ways that made you grow so fast. And, and also there's, uh, there's uh, different words, there's growth in the, get, in the middle and uh, due diligence, readiness, what kind of, uh, what, what words uh, come to like pop up to you, Sebastian? Uh, well, of course, um, uh, you, you need to have a solid, solid uh, business uh, plan and, and, uh, and you need to have, have uh, a solid cash flow as well. And, and you cannot just have, have uh, lots of users online. Uh, previously, you could have a, a web service with lots of users, but you really need to, to, to find that way uh, to, to convert those, especially those free users, you need to convert those to paying customers. That's really important. And you need to have some kind of proof that, that your concept works also as a monetized model. You cannot just, because there are lots of, lots of great free products out there, but, but they, they would never succeed in, in, as a pay version so so that's that's of course of course really important yeah yeah definitely all right there's a revenue three team uh, investor sales time in sales business value due diligence readiness future so a lot of lot of good words so thank you for uh for everybody all the participants for joining this and now let's go into the story that uh, we already got a peek out of so so i actually sebastian i put my did the moon socks uh, for you uh, on for, for this, <laughs> this story. <laughs> so, but let's get started. So let me, let me, uh, let me um, start this story uh, by telling like, the, so whiteboard uh, was less than um, uh, uh, established. Like uh, you exited uh, about two months ago to a bigger company in Norway called Kahoot. And, and the exit itself took uh, less than two weeks. And but, but as you said already, uh, which is quite crazy as well, uh, that your company was uh, just about uh, one year old. So first of all, congratulations on the exit. And like I said, for that, I put the, to the moon socks on. Uh, but hey, what kind of things you consider uh, to be important uh, in the early days that you did uh, that supported this possibility to actually exit this past summer? Well, well I, 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 our company was actually uh, under half a year from, from the, 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 the foundation to the, to the exit. So I think it was 170 something days. But, but anyhow, um, uh, as a new company, and, and, uh, you, it's of course a bit easier with a new company because you have not had the time to mess uh, so much up. Um, uh, but, but you really need to have everything really well structured and, and organized from the start. So, so um, I would say that that every it's important to have every internal meeting really well documented, even those more informal like brainstorming sessions and and everything that you do, you should really document uh, from the beginning, and preferably also documented in English. Uh, in the beginning, we used Finnish in, in our company, but now we, we, it would have maybe been easier to, to use English from the from the start. And of course, you need to have everything in place. You need to have every agreement properly signed and documented. You need to have all the information about the company up to date, like regarding ownerships and, and so forth. Uh, and of course, you, you need from the beginning to, to keep track of, of as many key performance indicators that, that you can, so that you can log everything so that you can show some, some, some traction, especially if you want to get investors on board before you have a product that you can actually sell. So, so, so that that's that's important. You need to, to show to have, you need to have something clear to show, and you you also benefit from having it, it um, uh, quickly ready to show when you need it. Uh, and, and of course, I would recommend to, to, to get a get a bookkeeper as quickly as possible to have everything correctly set up uh, and to set up the, the the founders' time in the beginning. But that's then when, as soon as we have some some kind of, of revenue. Mm. Is there like uh, some kind of tips? Like, do you feel that there is, is the could the bookkeeper, for example, be, be like certain type of bookkeeper or, or who, is, who is good? Well, it, it depends on the needs. I wouldn't have any special special thing to say about that. All right. Okay. That's great. So get, take, take your, uh, get your paperwork ready and, 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 and probably it's good to start in English. That's a good, good tip. So, uh, all right. So now let's go in. Well, you actually started this, but let's go into that. Part. So, so you, you were just about to tell about uh, how whiteboard kind of uh, got so popular and, 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 and what kind of whiteboard that they fired, like how it, how it uh, came popular so quickly and what happened there. So, so 
if you please could uh, kind of uh, continue on the story that you had. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so if if we roll back to, to 2016, well, from when the, the product was released to to the point that we released these paid versions, um, I, I would say that that one of the key factors why the product itself became so successful it was the ease of use, of course, but but also the, the knowledge of the field and and the, the knowledge of the requirements of the teachers and the users and the customers. And uh, as a company, you really need to, to obsess your customers and, and your users in the beginning and, and to listen carefully to them as you develop the product uh, and, and to develop it according to the user's need. And, and also when you do this, uh, you, you need to, to cut a few corners uh, and, and quickly, get, quickly get things up and running and test, this, uh, test it, especially if you're a small team, you don't have time to develop and, and to, to finish everything. And you cannot develop the product for a very long time and wait for it to be released. So, so I, I think we we had a really really great balance there when we developed the product. We have a uh, or when we developed the, the, the monetization version, uh, we did some intensive beta testing uh, together with the most active users before the the, the public release. And and um, also when we when we released this paid version of this previously free version, we we. We didn't remove uh, anything from the free plan. We have a, a we had nice balance with, with free features, and then we had th these really uh, much needed uh, features that we included in the in the subscription model. So so we didn't we didn't uh, uh, destroy the free entry level functionality. Rather, we added these new awesome features and those features that the, our customers or user had asked for mostly. So those we, we packaged it and, and included in those paid paid plans. And I would say that that during this process also we. we during the whole time, we have made lots of, of decisions, and and uh, and also when we had made uh, errors, we have quickly corrected the bad decisions. So, so lots of lots of decisions on the way. Everything from product development to technical arrangement, network architecture, recruitments, investor relations. Everything has been it has been really many many decisions on the on the, the way that that has that that led us to the point that the the, the the subscription models or, or, or plans were, were, were a success. So uh, you mentioned the <clears throat> KPI. So, so what kind of things do you consider like that were important when you were kind of uh, moving from the free version to the paid version? Was there something uh, that you followed them? Well, well uh, before you have a paid version, you don't have actual, any actual numbers to to. to to show you, you the, the only numbers that you have are like uh, uh, visitor counts and uh, and registered users and and uh, engagement and and, and such so, so that those are the numbers you 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 have in, in the beginning but then when as you start to sell you immediately get get a whole new level of 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 uh, indicators that you can follow and, and of course the revenue and the the, the percentage of, of conversion the conversion rates and, and and so 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 you track everything that you can track uh, how how uh, how did the kind of uh, free users how how actively did they actually start to uh, transform into paying customers? Uh, I don't have the exact number now because because okay. we we had a we had a quite a special product also uh, and that was that that our free users didn't need to be uh, registered to the service so they didn't need to. Uh, they didn't need to, to sign up uh, to use the service. It was just a quick one click and then they, they could use it in the classroom. So, so that way, it, there was no exact way to follow like one customer's uh, or one free user's journey to the, to the converted uh, user. But, but of course, as soon as we released these, these paid versions, we started to, to collect in the leads and, and so on. But, but that, that, that's why I don't have the exact number of, of, of the conversions rate from the free users to the, to the, to the paid. Sure. All right. Uh, so hey, uh, so you had uh, you mentioned that as well that you had uh, investors joining your company as well, and you tell us told us uh, how they how you found them. Uh, so from this pitching idea pitching competition, and uh, so uh, could you repeat like how early did you actually start this uh, finding the investors, and what kind of impact did the uh, investors had uh, like before? Uh, the exit and, and during the exit for your company. So what kind of impact did the investors bring to your company? 
Well, well uh, as, as mentioned there, when the service started to cost quite a lot uh, per, per day to run, it, it was, of course, important to get in the, 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 the financial part into the company so that it could continue running. But of course, that could have been solved also in different ways uh, other than, than taking in investors to the company. But 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 we of course we needed we needed networking we needed needed the the, the experience with um uh, with like how to to take take a, a fast growing business to the market the correct way in order to 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 avoid the most common mistakes of course we could have gone a long way as as well but we wanted to to go go the highway the quick way we wanted to take the shortcut. Uh, so, so that that that, that experience was, was really important to, to get on board early, so that we could could like uh, uh, make make the, the, the correct that, that direction from the from the start. And of course, uh, the, the 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 legal help was was a big part of this, especially in the beginning. But then also, especially during the the, the due diligence process, that was maybe one of the, the most important parts for, for for us. But we didn't actually. Uh, actively look for in, in investors in the beginning, but but quite quite quickly we found out that well, if we now want to to take it quickly to the next level, it would be like the the the, the short, shortcut. So so that's that's what we did. Uh, what do you kind of uh, feel like that uh, if you want to elaborate a little bit more on that? That what kind of uh, what kind of uh, tricks did you <laughs> did you get uh, uh, have by having the investors? No, what kind of what I did here? A tr trick, like so, Tricks. so, yeah. Well, well uh, um, so the, you said well, mentioned what, business model, like, uh, yeah, uh, was it like to, just because of uh, our, like previous, uh, like, uh, just to have more experience and kind of get faster to kind of get it done? And yeah, yeah, faster. It, it was, and, and also like like when, when you're selling to 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 schools organizations and, and districts you you the, the process is a bit different uh, um, uh, than selling to 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 to, to like to b to c so 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 you you need to have some uh, both the the uh, legal agreements and how we would set that up and how we would like uh, go about to 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 getting these organizations on board and, and those kind of things but also of course um, avoid making making uh, like uh, these mistakes of trying to say making the the paid version too complicated for the user or, or so so we had lots of, of these kinds of discussions in the beginning we have different ideas that we that we were, were considering and how we would monetize the model and what kind of payment alternatives we would have and so so, so the, these these things we we, we, we discussed together and could, could quite quickly found found a, a, a nice solution. So, so so that was really beneficial in the, during that that process before the, 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 the subscription models. Exactly. Yeah, I can I can imagine the, the kind of knowledge that the, the investors that you had that they were bringing. So so they really really fit uh, well into this this case. So so uh, good. But uh, then uh, to the exit. Uh, so, how did actually Kahoot, uh, Kahoot find you, and how did the process process uh, go with them after the first contact? So, so I need to start that we, we didn't have have like from the beginning we didn't have a quick exit like this in in mind, but but uh, but uh, it it was just it it, it just happened so to speak. But it is went to their think, own place. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I would say that also that, that this is one of the parts where we benefited from having um, investors on board early, so that we were like, um, uh, the, the information about the company was was like released through these press releases, because I believe that it was that way that the, that the, the Kahoot also find out about us through these these press releases that were that were sent uh, together with the with the when the investors came on board. I think that that was was the key because because we were such a such a, a, a young company, we didn't have any any public numbers anywhere visible. So 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 I, I believe it was it was through through those press releases and through the networks that that meant the, the whole whole thing. So, but but really, what what happened was that that uh, they, they contacted us. I would, it was so, sometime in, in early February, and and we, we set up set up a meeting together, and uh, then we 
shared, of course, our numbers. And as we had uh, had uh, tracked everything with our numbers, we had some very impressive numbers to, to show up immediately uh, after just r roughly two months of, of having this subscription model uh, uh, running. So we shared, shared numbers. And, and then, of course, what was maybe most important that we shared also visions. Uh, and, and we immediately found that, that our values and our visions matched very well. And, um, and that is to, to improve education worldwide and to making learning even more awesome. So, so that was like immediate matches of, 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 of the values. So, so um, in addition to, to the values, our, our products were also a very nice match and, and our products fit very nicely together uh, with each other and, and our, our service uh, fits, fits excellently into their large and, and growing portfolio. Uh, but, but, um, but of course, um, when, when we started this, this process, this, this due, due diligence process, uh, it, it was very, very thorough and, and uh, intense process, as you, as you know, you, you have, who have gone through, through this. And, and uh, basically every, everything about the company was checked, every number and, and everything. And, and luckily here, we had the paperwork ready. And, and uh, this is, is really where, where it helped also to have our own in-house legal investor on board so, so that we could uh, move forward with this process quite, quite quickly. Uh, so, so also during this due diligence process, when it began, uh, after the conversation with, with, with Kahoot in the beginning, we of course shared, shared numbers, and then, then we quite quickly started thinking about what, what would be, be the different alternatives and the, the due di diligence, of course. And, and um, when, when this started, I would say that everything else in, in our company was was set on, on hold, on pause. We, we worked nonstop in order to get everything set up during, during this whole, whole process. And, and uh, during these due diligence processes, there, there's a long, long list of, of everything to, to, to provide. Uh, I think we had probably nearly 100 rows of, of different things that we needed to provide to, 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 to the buyer during this process. So, so everything regarding corporate issues and every document and every details and everything about the employees, every agreements, hiring plans, even pensions and, and health and social arrangement, of course, finances, loans, accounting, etc. And, and, and all, all of course, contracts, all partnerships, all compliance and, and certificates and data usage and protection and, of course, intellectual property right, insurance, all, everything like uh, also IT systems and security and, and, and so forth. So, so everything was, was like needed to be provided in, during that process. So it was really intense weeks. I would, I, somebody said that it, we probably did in, in two weeks what often takes like six months to do. So exactly. And, and, and probably uh, did, you, did you sleep? I'm, I'm sure you didn't uh, uh, stop during the weekend. No, no, no. We 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 worked twenty four seven. But also, uh, our every participant in this this process worked like also during the week. And so so both the 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 the, the legal teams in both countries worked together also during the weekends in order to get get everything yeah. everything forward. Yeah. Then you then you probably know that uh, people are serious. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. Hey. So we're going to the end and we need to have some time for the audience questions, but hey, what's going to happen at whiteboard.fi now? So what are the plans now? Uh, well, now we're looking really forward to grow under, under Kahoot and, and to get all their users to know about our service. And, and we're working on different ways, of course, to in integrate the, the, the services. But and we have, of course, lots of, of interesting, interesting features coming up and, and uh, we are developing them. And we are really happy to do that together with, with Kahoot and, and as a part of the Kahoot team. And, and our company will, of course, continue working uh, as a separate company now, now in, in Finland here in Rasapore as well. And, and, and uh, really, we, we, I, I would say that this, this um, the exit is not like the end or the exit. I would say that this exit is the start. This is like the starting point where we really can, can 
can uh, build a solid foundation for the company and to, to grow it even further. I think that, that this is a great, great uh, opportunity for us to, to, to uh, benefit from the, the large Kahoot machinery and, and their uh, enormous footprint all over the world. So, so we are really, really, really excited to, to continue growing now. Yes, exactly. Sounds, sounds like solid plans. All right. Uh, so now everybody online, please go back to menti.com and, and use the same code. Uh, you, you, if you're still locked in, that's great. Now it's moving forward. So now it's time for, for the audience to ask questions. So you can, you can write your questions to, to Sebastian and, and we have a, a few minutes time to go through the questions. So, so go ahead and write your questions to Menti and, and we go through them. All right, we already have uh, the first question. That's, a, that's fast and somebody is a fast writer. Uh, at what stage the company did you develop uh, the monetization plan? Uh, did you already have this from the beginning, or it came after as the users grew? So, so you probably you touched this uh, question a little bit already. So, uh, yeah. So, so, so I, I would say uh, from the beginning it was a free service, but that, as it grew, uh, I also of course noticed that it cost more and more to, to, to run the service. So I immediately started thinking about different models and I have many, I had different uh, ideas and possibilities how this could be monetized. But, but really uh, it, the, the way we started thinking about as we founded the company around the, the service itself. And, and uh, so, so, so we had, we had a, a, a vision that it should be monetized, but the exact model uh, wasn't wasn't ready, but but we we had some some ideas where we were heading, and and that's also what we ended up with in, in the end. So so we 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 had the monetization plan uh, from the from the start, but it changed a bit on on the way. Yeah. 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 Good. All right, and 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 more questions, please write them there. Uh, I guess uh, is there a second question already? Uh, this. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. so, all right. Uh, so, um, uh, uh, all right, so great question. So what would you do differently uh, with whiteboard.fi now if you could kind of turn back time? Um, I, I would say, um, of course, when it, was, when it was originally released, it wasn't like built uh, in order to scale in the same, same, same way. So, so I would probably uh, prepare uh, the scaling in some different ways in the beginning so to, to, to spare myself from, from uh, headaches. Uh, so so, so that, that would maybe be the most part. We, we have lots of experience now in, in, scale, in scaling a, a service from, from a couple of thousand users to, to many millions. So, so that, that's maybe the, what we would do, do different. Yeah, great answer. Great question, Kelvin, as well. All right, and more questions, go ahead, write them there. Maybe I could ask this point uh, one while we're waiting for questions. So, so uh, I don't know what's the time. Yeah, okay, we have we still have like about five minutes time. So there's a good time for you guys to write your questions and we can take them. But Sebastian, what are your plans now? So uh, are you kind of uh, so? Do you have uh, like some extra plans now? Are you going to be uh, working for for this whiteboard FI now and and, and or um, and, and are you planning already some new companies or maybe becoming an investor or <laughs> what's your plan? Currently, uh, we are we are 100% focused on the uh, on whiteboard.fi. Of course, it's it's great to be a part of this growth journey. And, and now we are currently four persons full time, uh, or plus one freelancer, and and also plus one one summer intern full times. So we are a growing team. So 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 it's really exciting to have the team growing. So we are we are totally focused on 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 the, this service of course as i mentioned previously you can't stop the brain from from like coming up with new ideas and new services and new everything but but now somehow when, when there is this uh, solid key service uh, these ideas that that come up you can like combine them and put them into together and modify them and and uh, have them uh, have them applied in the current service so that's that's something that that helps so so, so 100% focused on this this project. It's it's really exciting to see it grow, and and um, I don't have have uh, any plans on, on becoming an investor myself. But but we'll see we'll see what what the times what, what happens with time. Yeah, 
great answer. I, I'm, I'm sure maybe maybe the time time brings you brings you to become an investor. I'm, I'm, I knew that uh, I already re kind of heard it uh, from your speak that I, I know that you are going to focus on whiteboard.fi at this point, uh, which is great, and, and it's going to be growing fast and and, and have a great and. and I've actually, I'm waiting to see what's going to happen there. So, so it's it's super exciting story, and, and great to see how it evolves. All right, uh, seems like that there is not coming uh, other questions. So I'm going to actually ask my final question, which is: uh, so we have now um, uh, founders online joining for this this event today, uh, and uh, but. But uh, any, what are your last tips, uh, kind of, uh, for the companies out there? Well, well of, of course, uh, the, the the product or the company needs to be solid, and the, 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 there needs to be a, a stable business plan, really. That, that, that and also you, as, as I mentioned, you don't have to polish the product until it's in, in its final shape. You, you need to have some kind of proof that it works and that it sells. And of course, you need to know your customers. You need to know your area of business really well. And you need, need to listen closely to your users and to your customers. And really, as mentioned, obsess the customers and, and to make them feel like a part of the development as well. And, and, and uh, with everything, network, tell your ID to others. Don't be afraid that it's stolen. And, and um, also consider what kind of investor relationship you are looking for and, and choose those investors wisely. Because if you have a product that is successful and, and it sells and you have, have lots of users, uh, you will get overwhelmed with all kinds of suggestions and, and business opportunities and alternatives. You, they, they're like magnets. You get lots and lots of, of, of requests. So you should really, really, really choose wisely what, what you are. Uh, what you want to do and and um, and also uh, you shouldn't really when you start off you shouldn't really really have the exit in focus and so that's like your only target you you, you need to focus on on your product on your company and and um, and uh, and uh, really if you love what you do uh, and, and if you really do, do things well I, I think it's it, it's it, the exit is not an exit the exit is a start to, to build something even more awesome Exactly. Hey, great words. Sebastian, a big thank you for joining us for this event and sharing your story. It's a super exciting story. We're happy to, happy to hear it and, and really, really nice that uh, you came to share it with everybody online and, and, and people can see this also as a, as a video later on. All right, thank but you, we, are, we are closing to the end. And, and one thing I want to pick up from what Sebastian said, so, so Kahoot founded you guys from, from, uh, uh, by, by, uh, by the media, media that you were giving these announcements. So all the investors online this time, remember to share the successful stories, uh, successful uh, funding round stories in Fibon because uh, it definitely pays off. Thank you, Sebastian. Now, short word on upcoming events. Next time we're gonna have uh, the uh, Max Persiaki coming from Promo Republic, sharing their story on expanding SaaS business in the U.S. market. So 19th of uh, uh, of May. <laughs> Sorry about that. 19th of May. So join us that time. I will be writing you info about this. Thank you, everybody, joining online, and and see you again next time. Thanks, Sebastian.